If you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want more funding for your deals, regardless of what any hard money lender or broker would tell you, regardless of what your banker would tell you, or as a matter of fact, uh, even your credit, don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you into the funding for real estate deals. Well, if you're brand new to real estate investing with Jay Connor, I want to give you a special welcome and a special hello. Thank you for joining. We've got, wow, the show is starting to explode now with the number of downloads we've got on iTunes and Google Play. We've also got a couple of different channels on uh, YouTube as well. So anyway, what do we talk about here on the show? Well, we talk about everything real estate investing, but particularly we focus on single family houses. If you're new to the show, um, my wife, Carol Joy and I, we've been investing in real estate here in Eastern North Carolina for 15 years. Our market is small. It's only about a 40,000 uh, population market that we target real estate investing in. And we do maybe two or three transactions a month. But most of the houses we do renovate and flip. And the average profit now is $64,000 per deal. So when you can make those kind of profits, and we talk about you know all kinds of ways that you can make that kind of money here on the show, uh, then you don't have to do you know that many transactions. I've got a really special guest uh, here on the show with me today that you're going to want to listen to all the way to the end of the show. I'm going to introduce him in just a moment, but he has been my credit repair expert and specialist for the past nine years. His name is Paul Ritter. I'm going to introduce him in just a moment after I deliver to you my promise that I made just a moment ago, and that is, well, how in the world am I going to get you plugged into the funding for your deals? Well, you want to make a note of this. In just a very, very short, uh, short week, in fact, it's just right around the corner. The time you're hearing this podcast and we're going live with it, it may be only two to three weeks away. So I've got my upcoming live event called the Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference. And uh, here's the website that we're going to put down. You can go over and check it out. It's www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash, all in lowercase, money podcast. That's all one word. Jay Connor, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. That will take you right over to the, um, the website that, uh, where I talk all about the live event. Let me give you just a quick overview of what's going to be happening at the live event and why you would want to come. And, and then we'll get Paul on here on the show. Uh, I don't know another real estate investing event like this. Three days, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I have it right here in Eastern North Carolina. I can't do this event anywhere else, and here's why. On the very first day of the event, we actually go out to some of my houses that we have either under renovation or we've just closed on them and haven't started rehab yet. We'll go look at some houses that we finished and we've just put on the market. They're all staged and everything. I teach you how I found, found the deals. I give you all the numbers, exactly uh, what the rehab is costing, et cetera, or how much it did cost. And here's what's really cool. On that rehab bus tour, and I mean, we take a luxury coach uh, bus around here in the area to these houses. So you see, we're not looking at houses in the multiple listing service. We're actually looking at real live real estate investing, what's going on today and what's working today. You'll meet uh, my contractors that I do business with and how I work with them. You'll meet uh, our interior designer. You'll meet uh, other crew members. You'll meet uh, one of our assistants, our acquisitionist that we work with on locating the deals. And so you're going to see in real, real life what's going on in the rehabbing side of the business. Now, on the second day, I actually have private lenders, about a dozen or so, come to my event that you get to network with. Uh, I also teach you my foreclosure system, which accounts for about a fourth of our business, how we find real estate deals before other real estate investors even know they exist. We have a fantastic VIP reception on the evening of the second day. The third day is uh, I teach how I can sell any house in three days or less using my rent to own selling system. And that's why I have Paul here on the show with me to talk about how that exit strategy works and the service that he offers that's, that's so vital to making it successful. I also will be teaching automation, all right? How we automate the business, how I actually work in the business, 
months and 10 hours per month. And we've got everything automated. It took me about a year to get everything automated in the business. And uh, so I'll be teaching that to you as well. So get on over there and check it out. I want to say it'll be me in person for three days at the upcoming Real Estate Investing Cashflow Conference. So get on over as we have it here, www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. Okay, with that, it's time to bring on my expert, my specialist, my special guest, my very good friend, Paul Ritter. Paul is the owner of uh, Prequal Team and ScreamTheTenant.com. And Paul has been my go-to person. He's handled all of the credit repair. And, and here's the deal. When I have someone that I'm selling a home on lease option or with rent to own, same thing. Well, they're not ready for a mortgage. Okay. And so it's Paul and his team that I use to get these buyers ready for a mortgage while they are living in the house. And so, in, you know, in fact, we tell the people at the closing table, for all practical purposes, this home is yours. We just haven't transferred the title or the deed yet. And while you're living in the home, you know, Paul Ritter and his team will be getting you ready for the mortgage. And then that's when we cash out. What's really cool is uh, Paul's, if his numbers haven't changed, and I'll let him speak to this in a second, uh, his average uh, credit score that, or uh, the average score that he's able to raise is about 85 points in six months or nine months, something like that. So anyway, Paul, I'm so excited to have you on the show and welcome, my friend. Well, thank you, Jay. Boy, we've been friends for quite a long time now. It's been, I guess, what, about uh, seven or eight years you and I have been working together? I think it's right at nine years. Time's been flying by, Paul. And and uh, so, yeah, and, uh, you know, you and your wife, Joanne, uh, great friends of mine and Carol Joy, and it's just been great to um, have you part of our process and you know, what's cool about you, Paul, is you all get the job done. You know, there's a lot of credit repair or credit restoration companies out there, but, you know, you all actually get it done, and it's just been great to be working with you. Well, thank you. Thank you for that edification, and thank you for that introduction. Folks, I tell you, I've had the opportunity and the um, the blessing to go down and see Jay and visit with him and Carol Joy on more than one occasion and um, even be a part of his boot camp and uh, going around on his bus tour. And there is nobody in this industry that teaches things more clearly and concisely and answers the questions that you have than Jay Connor. So if you are on the fence about going to his boot camp, I would highly recommend uh, going there because he is, he is, not only is he the best in the industry, but he's actively doing it. Jay, we've done hundreds of houses that we've taken from a point where people couldn't buy a toaster on credit <laughs> to getting them to a mortgage and cashing them out. And I've had the honor and the privilege of sharing times with a lot of stories with those people. They, they call me up afterwards and they, they post things on my Facebook page and they're, and they're so appreciative of, of that. And they've, they've referred other people to us as well. So uh, it's been a wonderful uh, business. I love your business model fact that you really do want to get them to the cash out closing table. The way we would like to think of it, Jay, is there's really two closing tables with each transaction. The first one is the one where you're giving them the keys and you're saying, okay, you're going to be in a rental situation. And the second one may be a year or two down the road. And that's where they're cashing out for the mortgage. So we're able to get a lot of people to that second closing table because of the action plan we put into play. And because this is really key, folks, the way Jay level sets the people, and he has this, what he calls, he has that little Southern twang. I love his accent, but he says, we have this coming to Jesus moment sometimes, you know, where they have to basically understand that this is not a one-sided street, that it's not all on my, it's not all on us as a credit repair, credit repair specialist. We do, we, we perform, not miracles, but we perform our service is unmatched in the industry because of the aggressive nature we go after the credit bureaus. But there's always that little, that little piece that needs to be accompanied our service. And Jay's an expert at do, doing that, like building new credit, age of credit, mix of credit, balance limit ratio. And he doesn't know all these terms, but what he's doing is he's helping people understand that they have to partake actively in this process somewhat in order to be able to get to that end game. So kudos to you, Jay, and how you do business. And 
Uh, anybody who comes to your classes will learn the details of that as you work with them. Right, Paul. So um, what, I, what I'm going to want you to do in just a moment is to actually walk through the process. What does that process look like? You know, of someone you know entering credit repair, you know, with you and with your team. You know what they do, what you all do, and et cetera. We'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. But I want you to take just a moment and and tell people first of all how it is you're qualified that you know to do the work that you do and then secondly what's really different about your service and how you do credit repair say from other companies okay so uh the reason i feel i'm qualified i, I own and operate actually uh, three different entities that all feed into this uh you had mentioned on the onset that there's pre-qual team and this screen the tenant those two are really near brother and sister companies of each other. The reason why I kind of separate is because some people think when they think of they're going to screen the tenant, they're thinking that they're never going to own the house. They're only doing a screening for a rental. Pre-qual team talks more of what we actually are performing, which is a pre-pre-qualification. We're doing futuristic underwriting for somebody, what they need to do in order to get from cradle to grave uh, from where they are right now to their mortgage. In the, in the future. So pre-qualification or pre-qual team, both of them do the same thing. You can go to either site. They both have similar application processes and so on. The other company, the probably the more important one here is the My Credit Team company. And I've owned and operated that since, I think I started the company in 2005, but I've really been doing that service since about 1997. And the way that started out, I owned and operated diff several different mortgage companies, Jay. And what happened was a lot of people started to understand that I had this talent to be able to help fix up credit reports. So I'm one of the pioneers out there. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of people that have come along lately and try, and, and try to break into this industry. And it's a very noble industry, but it, it's also like any other industry, it's riddled with people who really will just uh, take your money and not perform the level of service that they're indicating on the onset. So the reason I've survived so long is because I like to uh, overperform and, you know, just basically make certain that the, the, pe the level set of the people is at least level with, with where, they sh where they think they should be, where they should get to or better. I don't like it whenever they have unrealistic expectations and don't get to where they need to be. So one of the reasons why we're unique, Jay, on the credit repair side, and this is a writer downer, is one of the things is we dispute all the negative things all the time. And a lot of people hear that and say, well, big deal. What the heck's that mean to me? It's everything. It's everything in this industry. It, it talks of the business model of the company that you're working with. Let's take uh, Lexington Law, for example. What their business model is, is, is to to try to keep your clients on the hook for as long as possible. And in keeping with that business model, let's just say a person were to have oh, 10 negative items on their credit report. That implies they have 30 across three credit bureaus. Lexington Law would dispute one thing every 45 days, and you could see how it would take years for them to get through the first level of disputes. In that same person, Jay, we would dispute all the negative things all the time, so we might get 10 off because I dispute all 30 negative items, and you could see how that's a quantum leap from being in a position to only do only get one item off the credit report. So that's why. We can give you an end date on the date that you start. So the people are going to be with our service for no more than nine months. And our fees are really uh, about the same as Lexington Law uh, charges or everyone else out there. It's $120 per month. And again, they give you an end date on the date you start, no more than nine months. So the second part of the answer to this question, you says what makes us unique as far as the credit repair that's that's the primary thing. And there's other things too, like you can track your results online real time, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. As a real estate investor, you can track your tenant buyer's results. That's kind of unique as well. The other thing that's going to make us unique is on the pre-qual team or the screen attendant side of the business, we get their income documentation in, like TransUnion Smart Moves or Landlord Station or any other screening service out there. They're not getting their income documentation and they're not doing what we call an affordability analysis. And in that affordability analysis, there's a lot of what if games that we can play. And I'll get into that in just a little bit here, but that's what makes us unique. And then 
we're also going to give an action plan in that screening service that lets them know, the tenant buyer know what they need to do in order to become mortgage ready. And it's inclusive of all the steps that they need to take, not just repairing the credit, but it talks about budgeting. It talks about what to do and not to do with your bills. You know, what happens when you pay off your car? Should you go out and get another Mercedes the day before you apply for your loan? Obviously, that's a no-no. But those type of things they should have taught us in high school and college, but they didn't. Those are yeah. the things we're basically teaching. Yeah. So let me go ahead and share a uh, statistic with our audience. And that is, of course, if any of our audience viewers or listeners that are real estate investors will already know this. But if you are you know, tuning in here on the podcast and you've never invested in a real estate deal yet, and you haven't done your first deal, then you want to know this statistic. So the reason Paul and his team are involved in my process is that when I sell a house on rent to own or lease purchase, same thing, my intention is the same intention as the tenant buyer or the buyer of that house. And that is they're wanting to own the house. They're wanting to move towards, you know, getting their own mortgage and cashing me out and stopping paying rent. And so when they are ready, uh, you know, when I accept someone and approve someone, I'm approving the amount of the non-refundable, the legal term is option fee. And most people call it a lease option deposit, but the actual legal term is an option fee. And here in North Carolina, you've got two separate documents. You have the option and then you have the residential rental contract, mutually exclusive agreements. So they pay you know, they pay a non-refundable option fee, which is going to be $5,000, $10,000, $25,000, dollars whatever that is that we negotiate and agree on. And then they're going to be paying monthly rent. And rent is rent. I'm not giving any credit to the purchase price from what they're paying in the monthly payment on rent unless they want to pay an additional amount on top of what the market rate is for that house. So one of their incentives is to get ready for the mortgage is that they're going to stop paying me rent and they'll, you know, start making a mortgage payment and the title and they just transferred in their name. Now, here's the important percentage or statistic I want to give you. With Paul and his team being involved with the, the tenant buyer of that home and being in the process, then somewhere around 80% or so of those are actually going to cash out and get a mortgage. The 20% that don't, something happened in their life that was unexpected. You know, someone died, someone lost a job, somebody got a divorce, and we're something with the financial complexion of that household income changed. And typically what we want to do is we want to get the people ready for the mortgage within 12 months or less is what my initial goal is. Great thing about Paul and his team is he reviews the credit reports and looks at it, has a conversation with the um, tenant buyer. And, you know, Paul's like, uh, like an attorney. He can't guarantee anything. But when you have, you know, worked on two or 3,000 files, you got a pretty good guess as to how long, you know, the process is going to take. If you do not use Paul's services for your rent-to-own buyers, and of course, you know, Paul, we've got a, a good percentage of the audience I have on here may need credit repair themselves because what percentage still can't go to the bank today and get a mortgage of, of Americans? 80% or so? I know it's pretty high. But if you don't use Paul's service with your tenant buyers or your rent-to-own buyers, a minuscule percentage of those tenant buyers will ever get ready for a mortgage if they're left to their own devices. So I wanted to frame this, Paul, as to how important you know your service is for the real estate investor that's wanting those tenant buyers to move to cash out well that that's you couldn't be more right on with that analogy and that and that um overview of of how our services impact the transaction and and having a wide audience to select from having hundreds of files having done you know the, the amount of business that we've done it's yeah, it's it's very telling. If your if your business model is to put a, somebody in a house and and uh, and hope that they fail, 
that might work in the short run, but you know, Jay, he's a member of a community down there. And if you ever go down and visit him, you'll understand kind of what he's got on going on down there. And he has to face these people, you know, in church and in his community, the people he gets the houses from. And he wants to make certain that whenever he talks with them in the future, that he did everything he possibly could to make certain that those people got to their end game and, and he didn't misrepresent any sort of transaction. That's why his business uh, perpetuates and survives so long because of his business model is altruistic be, between whatever he's trying to accomplish and what, what they're trying to accomplish, a tenant buyer. So if you want to raise those odds and, and you want to, and you want to, if you, I mean, there's that. And then there's a the legal ramification of, of not doing what you're, you know, misrepresenting a transaction. Like, you know, our friend Dodd Frank might come along and, and come up and bite you, but with our service, we have, you've done everything you possibly, in, in the spirit of Dodd-Frank, you've done everything you possibly could in order to get them to an end game, including having a, an independent outside professional look at their affordability and then their credit as well. Yeah. So, Paul, um, give us an overview as to when, you know, a, you have a new client, they start in the process. Am I still correct on your numbers? Is your average about an 85 credit point increase in six months? Is that still your numbers? Well, we like to point more toward nine months. We're finding, Jay, that more people are going with our service for nine months. That's our maximum amount of service. There right. are times that we do six months. I, would, I usually say if they have less than seven negative items on the credit report, they really only need my service for six months. But I would say probably that's about 25% of the people fall in that category. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got you. All right. So let's take uh, let's take a, a couple of minutes and just walk us through the overview, not all the nitty gritty, but the overview of, of a client is a new client. They've signed up. What's that process look like and who does what? Well, the the front end way to get them to sign into our, our service really is with the screening service. That is the, unless they're already in the house. Jay, if they're already in the house, you send them directly to credit repair because you don't need to screen them, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, so what you're referring to is, first of all, the real estate investor needs to know if the potential tenant buyer can afford the the house that they're moving into, and as importantly, for you to take a look at their debts and their income and to look at it from the standpoint of what a credit underwriter is going to be looking at as to, you know, can they afford the mortgage even when their their credit score is in is is high enough, correct? Correct. Affordability is a large piece of eligibility for the. Okay. Market. Well, let's start with that piece. How do we find out if a potential tenant buyer can afford the house? Well, actually, I have something queued up on my screen right here, and I can share it with you. Kind of do a little show and tell. It would, uh... I, that'd be fine. Yes. So, um, you know, part of our audience is viewing. Part of our audience is just things. So, for the those that are viewing on video. You'll be able to see uh, Paul's slide up here on the screen. And Paul, for the uh, for the benefit of those that are just listening on audio, you know, fill in all the cracks so they understand what's going okay. on. Okay. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. So what this um, analysis worksheet that we work off of really is, is, is it's accumulation of underwriting guidelines for FHA, VA, USDA, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac. And what we're doing here is we're taking their income documentation. In other words, we actually get the pay stubs and the W-2s and tax returns if they're self-employed. And we're, it, we're, then we're figuring out what basically what an underwriter would say that they make per month. People, surprisingly enough, don't realize how much they, you know, what they make per month. A lot of times they don't understand that you can gross up non-taxable income. So we handle all that. We figure out what they're making. And then we go under the credit report and we pull up all their debts. If you have the benefit of seeing the screen, and you'll see here the how we entered some of these debts onto this uh, worksheet. But essentially, for those who are listening, it's you know I'm looking at uh, credit card summation and and automobile payments and so on. And like for example, in this particular case, I have one of these items that uh, the debt for the automobile is in brackets, which basically means we're going to ignore the debt. Well, why would I ignore a debt for an automobile payment? Well, maybe there's less than ten payments remaining on it, or at least there will be 10 payments or less remaining on that debt at the time they apply for the mortgage, which is a key element. People don't understand that they they can like not buy another car right before they go and get the mortgage because if they hold on to the old car and have it down to those payment levels, now they can endure that debt. In this particular case, 
This is a business automobile. This person is self-employed. And he makes his payments for his business, for his automobile from his business account. So we're looking at all the debts. We're looking at all the income. And what it does is it's going to give us what's called a debt to income ratio analysis. Now, this is all pretty simplistic stuff. It's basically taking one number, dividing it into the other in consideration of the new loan payment, taxes and insurance and all the other payments and, and coming up with two sets of numbers. The first one is my housing and the second one is all my debts. When I, in this particular case, I'm looking at a 22% front end ratio and a 33% back end ratio, with, which is in line with, with what FHA, VA, USDA, Freddie Mae, Freddie Mac guidelines are. So in this particular case, it doesn't spit out any sort of error codes and says that this person's in range. But if I were to, for example, lower the income on this person down to 3000 as opposed to 4400 you can see how all kind of error codes come up. So on our side, what this enables us to do is for us to figure out what they need to show as their adjusted gross income in order to qualify for a mortgage. So that's that's very, very powerful, especially for that guy who has a grass cutting business, who hasn't done his tax returns yet, needs to know what he needs to show over the course of the next two years as you're putting him into the house. And all this, all these variables I have in here, FICO score, what type of loan, purchase price, down payment, the amount of income, all these variables, all the variables play into each other. For example, if I were to lower my FICO score, in this particular case, I have it at 750 set there. If I lower it down to 550, now all of a sudden it so shows me the score is unacceptable and that they should go into credit repair. Additionally, if I lower my down payment to less than 5 percent. In this particular case, I've got a $7,500 down payment on a house that's worth $150,000. If I lower my payment, my down payment to say $2,000, which they're thinking first in months, last month rent, then certain things happen like the fixed rate program goes away. I, I can't do that. I have to have at least 5% down. So all these guidelines are, are built in here. Like in, in this case, I lowered my down payment down to the lower than the 3% required for FHA. So it gives me an error code. So it lets me know all those things, you know, what's going to put this, this file out of bounds. Yeah, so, so Paul, the, the bottom line is the benefit to the real estate investor is that you and your team handle this process directly with the tenant buyer, right? So the real estate investor doesn't have to be sending any of this stuff into you, right? Correct. I'm, I'm going to handle all this behind the scenes. Jay, here's one really cool thing down the bottom here is like the, the, month, the monthly rental. And you, and you alluded to a point earlier, you said that you have to have the minimum of what the market demands for the rent. And mm -hmm. that's a really key point. I've, I've come in, I've, we've done this before with people who have set the rent for, let's say, $1,500 for a $750,000 house. Well, there's a problem with that. It's called, it's called payment shock. So mm -hmm. whenever they go and they try to get the mortgage, the mortgage is going to be higher than what they've been paying in rent. And the underwriter is going to, going to, that's going to be a point of contention. It doesn't mean that they're going to be turned down, but now they need to show us how they're going to continue making those that level, higher level of payments. So I'll let you know that beforehand. So mm -hmm. the cool thing, like in, in the case I was mentioning, I, I turned around and said, hey, you need about $2,700 rent for this house. And the guy, the real estate investor went and asked the people for it, says, you know, we, we don't want to create payment shock. You do want to buy this house in the future, don't you? I know you're putting $40,000 down, but I need to ask you for $2,700 a month rent. And the person says, oh yeah, I understand now why I need to pay that. And they basically turn around and pay that amount. So there's, there's protection for you as a real estate investor to make certain that all the parameters of the setting up for the loan will be within guidelines. Yeah. So how long does this process take? So from the time the real estate investor, you know, gets the, the tenant buyer, you know, on the phone or in, in contact with you and your team, how long is it going to take to get this answer back to the real estate investor to see if they can, you know, what they can afford? Well, there are two major elements that I need in order to be able to to run the numbers. And once I get once I get these these two elements, it's it's usually within 24 hours. I need right. access to their credit report, so they need to grant me access to their credit report. And so I, for that, I need to talk with them because I we really we really like to get their credit karma account because they don't have an inquiry on their credit report. Mm -hmm. 
So they have to need, they, they should talk with us for that. And then the other thing is the, the income. All I need to have is a pay stub or a W-2 and people can use their cell phone, snap a picture and, and send us their pay information. Right. When I so get let, me, let, me, let me ask you this real quick. So let's say I've got a potential buyer of one of my homes and, you know, let's say I don't want them to go fall in love with a particular home or be looking at a home that they can't afford to start with. Does, do you have a, a way with your process to report back and say, okay, here's the maximum loan amount that these people can afford given their debts or what debts they're anticipated to have at the time they'd be ready for a mortgage and the income that they have? Yeah, ab absolutely. We have that, you know, what we call that, what, you know, what's the maximum amount? You said it, what's the maximum that, that I can afford? maximum right. affordability. So we can backwards mathematically uh, calculate out that number for you all the way down to the dime. So uh, now let's say to you, so you or the team have gotten back to the tenant buyer, the real estate investor, here's, here's the maximum amount. Okay. So, so now we know they can afford it. All right. Hypothetically speaking, we've got a tenant buyer that can afford it. They got enough uh, non-refundable lease option deposit to give us and now they've, they've chosen a home, we're good to go, and you have anticipated it's going to take about nine months for them to get ready for the mortgage. They move into the home. Now what's that process look like from them starting the credit uh, restoration process to getting ready for the mortgage? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is you, as a, a, the real estate investor, will be notified that they've engaged in the credit repair process you'll be given some disclosure forms that I'll, I'll advise that you have them sign. One of them is, is the one I just had on the screen, which is the debt to income ratio analysis. There's actually a signature line there that says that they're not gonna materially change their income or their debt load. So as they go through the credit repair, my staff is gonna basically write some letters and, and we're gonna write letters that go to the credit bureaus, TransGene, Equifax, and Experience. So without kind of giving away all the secret sauce as to how the whole thing works, we know what to say to who to say it and how to say it at the appropriate time to have the bad things removed from the credit report and then have them build new credit. And that's where the whole thing comes in about 85 points is their average improvement score. So that behind the scenes, uh, we're doing all that. Plus there's a little bit of participation on their part if they have to build credit and no new bad stuff, you know. Yeah. Now, how can the real estate investor that has referred this client to you? And by the way, I'll just go ahead and tell everybody, you know, when someone gives me a large enough lease option deposit, then I pay Paul and his team out of that lease option deposit for the service, okay? Instead of relying on the tenant buyer to be making that monthly payment or, or what have you. I mean, a lot of times they will be maxed out on what they can afford, you know, on their, on their monthly rent that they're paying us. And so, but you see, they're giving me a non-refundable lease option deposit. So it's actually the tenant buyer that is cash flowing the payment for Paul's services, even though, you know, it is, you know, it, it is coming from us. So I just wanted to share that with everybody, Paul. So how can the real estate investor be current all the time and be made aware as to the progress that, you know, the, you know how the stores are coming up or, you know, certain uh, derogatory items have been deleted? How can the real estate investor know what's going on and not be left in the dark, you know, along the way? We give them a tracking mechanism. They can go log on to our system, the private portal. The, all they're going to do is set it up and, uh, and, and then they, when they click on their portal, they'll see everybody that they've referred to us that's doing credit repair. They'll see all of their statuses. They can click on any one of the names and bring up where they're at right now when the last letters went out, what's left. What set of results have they've received all the way down to the item level, Jay? It'll show, like, for example, the judgment came off of a credit report, which is a major, major mm -hmm. thing, especially if you're trying to get it through, uh, as you know, mortgages or, you know, there are certain things that will disqualify people from a time frame. Like for two years, they're not going to get a loan after a bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. so there's, there's, there's score. And then there's underwriting guidelines. And either of them can knock them out of the, the mortgage process. So if a certain element is on the credit report and it's an element that, that affects underwriting guidelines and disqualifies them and all of a sudden now it's off the credit report, well, you know, that's a major one. I mean, that's, that's where we do our little dance and we get them over to the mortgage broker as quickly as possible. Yeah, um, one of the other things, if I may, Jay, you mentioned a little bit about you paying the fee and such. But, but, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that that 
that puts you in a position where when you advertise, you can actually say this, this house comes with credit repair. So your phone rings a little bit more than the average real estate. Yeah. Actually, absolutely. When we are promoting and, you know, looking for rent to own buyers, which by the way, I want to tell the entire audience right now, let me tell you where I'm finding these rent to own buyers right now. I'm getting more leads from this one source and it's free. It's free folks. And that is Facebook marketplace. Facebook marketplace is outperforming everything uh, you know, as of right now, I still do Facebook ads, but they don't even perform as well as the free marketplace. So anyway, in our marketing, we will advertise free credit repair. And it is free. I'm paying for it. Being cash flowed by the non-refundable lease option deposit, but I'm paying for it. And the reason that increases our response to our marketing is that the majority of the people that are going to be responding to a rent-to-own ad or, or a rent-to-own home or program, they know they need the credit repair. And so you're, you're speaking their language and it increases our response by promoting free credit repair. So I'm glad you brought that up, Paul. Paul, tell everybody where you, where you are located and what areas of the United States that you service. Sunny, beautiful Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania here in February. <laughs> it's not quite so sunny and beautiful. But anyhow, that's where we're located, right out of um, a little suburb outside of Pittsburgh called Murraysville. Been here for quite some time, have about, have six people that work with the company, so we're small but mighty, so we can easily handle your business in all 50 states. So we've done business in all 50 states as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Paul, we are just about out of time, if you can believe it. Have you got any burning information that's really, really hot that you feel like you need to share before we wind down the show? And then we're going to give out uh, your contact information for those who would like to continue the conversation with you. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time out to, uh, to introduce me to those within uh, your universe, Jay. So um, um, we're here. We're, we're, uh, we're like, as I mentioned, we're a family-run business. So we're all approachable, and whenever you start doing business with us, you, you'll get a, a personal phone call from me. You know, whenever you do your first deal, send your first deal through us. So, I just want to introduce you to how the whole process works. I have a really cool script that I can provide to any, anybody listening to this. So, if they want to uh, text me their uh, contact information, then uh, I will, I'll send them off the script. All I really need is their email address. It'd be helpful if I had their name as well. And I'll send them a script, and uh, and I got a couple other freebies I can send along the way too, and uh, I'll send those by email as well. All right. So how do they locate you? How do they reach out to you, Paul? Well, probably the easiest thing is just text me your name and your email address to four one two two four two two seven three three. That's four one two four one two two four two two four two two seven three three two seven three three. And if someone wants to go. Go to your website first. What website would you give out? I would give out screenthetenant.com. Is a very one word, screenthetenant.com. All right. And if someone prefers to initially communicate with you by email, what email address you want to give out? Oh, uh, paul at mycreditteam.com. And the other website really to refer them to for the credit repair would be my credit team. And you'll, you'll notice on there that there's a, a section that talks about rent to own and no other credit repair company has a rent to own section. So, oh, by the way, my, myself and my wife, we're also real estate investors too. Sure, sure. So your email is paul, P-A-U-L, at mycreditteam.com, right? Credit and team have two T's which run together. Yes, that's it. All right. That's perfect. That's perfect. Paul, thank you so much for taking your time uh, to be here on the show. Great information. And as I said at the beginning of the show, um, it's just been great to have you and uh, Joanne and your team, you know, taking care of this for nine years now for, for my uh, tenant buyers. And it's just fantastic. Appreciate you being on, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. Absolutely. And everybody, I want to see you at the upcoming uh, Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference. Get on over to www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Jay Conner, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And until we see you on the next show, here's to taking your real estate investing career to the next level. Bye for now.
Yeah. So, Paul, um, give us an overview as to when, you know, a, you have a new client, they start in the process. Am I still correct on your numbers? Is your average about an 85 credit point increase in six months? Is that still your numbers? Well, we like to point more toward nine months. We're finding, Jay, that more people are going with our service for nine months. That's our maximum amount of service. There right. are times that we do six months. I, would, I usually say if they have less than seven negative items on the credit report, they really only need my service for six months. But I would say probably that's about 25% of the people fall in that category. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got you. All right. So let's take, uh, let's take a, a couple of minutes and just walk us through the overview, not all the nitty gritty, the overview of, of a client is a new client. They've signed up. What's that process look like and who does what? Well, the, the front end way to get them to sign into our, our service really is with the screening service. That is the, unless they're already in the house. Jay, if they're already in the house, you send them directly to credit repair because you don't need to screen them, obviously. Yeah. yeah, so what you're referring to is, first of all, the real estate investor needs to know if the potential tenant buyer can afford the, the house that they're moving into, and as importantly, for you to take a look at their debts and their income and to look at it from the standpoint of what a credit underwriter is going to be looking at as to, you know, can they afford the mortgage even when their, their credit score is in is, is high enough, correct? Correct. Affordability is a large piece of eligibility for the mortgage. Okay, well, let's start with that piece. How do we find out if a potential tenant buyer can afford the house? Well, actually, I have something queued up on my screen right here, and I can share it with you, kind of do a little show and tell. It would, uh... That'd be fine. Yes. So, um, you know, part of our audience is viewing, part of our audience is just things. So for the those that are viewing on video, you'll be able to see uh, Paul's slide up here on the screen. And Paul, for the uh, for the benefit of those that are just listening on audio, you know, fill in all the cracks so they understand what's going okay. on. Okay. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. So what this um, analysis worksheet that we work off of, really is, is is its accumulation of underwriting guidelines for FHA, VA, USDA, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac. And what we're doing here is we're taking their income documentation. In other words, we actually get the pay stubs and the W-2s and tax returns if they're self-employed. And we're, it, we're then we're figuring out what basically what an underwriter would say that they make per month. People, surprisingly enough, don't realize how much they, you know, what they make per month. A lot of times they don't understand that you can gross up non-taxable income. So we handle all that, we figure out what they're making, and then we go under the credit report and we pull up all their debts. If you have the benefit of seeing the screen and you'll see here the how we've entered some of these debts onto this uh, worksheet. But essentially for those who are listening, it's, you know, I'm looking at uh, credit card summarization and, and automobile payments and so on. Like for example, in this particular case, I have one of these items that uh, the debt for the automobile is in brackets, which basically means we're gonna ignore the debt. Well, why would I ignore a debt for an automobile payment? Well, maybe there's less than 10 payments remaining on it, or at least there will be 10 payments or less remaining on that debt at the time they apply for the mortgage, which is a key element. People don't understand that they, they can like not buy another car right before they go and get the mortgage because if they hold on to the old car and have it down to those payment levels, now they can ignore that debt. In this particular case, this is a business automobile. This person's self-employed. And he makes his payments for his business, for his automobile from his business account. So we're looking at all the debts. We're looking at all the income. And what it does is it's going to give us what's called a debt to income ratio analysis. Now, this is all pretty simplistic stuff. It's basically taking one number, dividing it into the other in consideration of the new loan payment, taxes and insurance and all the other payments and, and coming up with two sets of numbers. The first one is my housing and the second one is all my debts. When a, in this particular case, I'm looking at a 22% front end ratio and a 33% back end ratio, with, which is in line with, with what FHA, VA, USDA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac guidelines are. So in this particular case, it doesn't spit out any sort of error codes and says that this person's in range. But if I were to, for example, lower the income on this person down to 3000 as opposed to 4400 you can see how all kind of error codes come up. So on our side... What this enables us to do is for us to figure out what they need to show as their adjusted gross income in order to qualify for a mortgage. So that's 
that's very, very powerful, especially for that guy who has a grass cutting business, who hasn't done his tax returns yet, needs to know what he needs to show over the course of the next two years as you're putting him into the house. And all of this, all of these variables I have in here, FICO score, what type of loan, purchase price, down payment, the amount of income, all these variables, all the variables play into each other. For example, if I were to lower my FICO score, in this particular case, I have it at 750 set there. If I lower it down to 550, now all of a sudden it so shows me that the score is unacceptable and that they should go into credit repair. Additionally, if I lower my down payment to less than 5%, in this particular case, I've got a $7,500 down payment on a house that's worth $150,000. If I lower my payment, my down payment to say $2,000, which they're thinking first in months, last month rent, then certain things happen like the fixed rate program goes away. I, I can't do that. I have to have at least 5% down. So all these guidelines are, are built in here. Like in, in this case, I lowered my down payment down to the lower than the 3% required for FHA. So it gives me an error code. So it lets me know all those things, you know, what's going to put this, this file out of bounds. Yeah, so, so Paul, the, the bottom line is the benefit to the real estate investor is that you and your team handle this process directly with the tenant buyer, right? So the real estate investor doesn't have to be sending any of this stuff into you, right? Correct. You I'm, I'm going to handle all this behind the scenes. Jay, here's one really cool thing down the bottom here is like the, the, month, the monthly rental. And you, and you alluded to a point earlier. You said that you have to have the minimum of what the market demands for the rent. And mm -hmm. that's a really key point. I've, I've come in. I've, we've done this before with people who have set the rent for, let's say, $1,500 for a $750,000 house. Well, there's a problem with that. It's called, it's called payment shock. So mm -hmm. whenever they go and they try to get the mortgage, the mortgage is going to be higher than what they've been paying in rent. And the underwriter is going to, going to, that's going to be a point of contention. doesn't mean that they're going to be turned down, but now they need to show us how they're going to continue making those, that level, higher level of payments. So I'll let you know that beforehand. So mm -hmm. the cool thing, like in, in the case I was mentioning, I, I turned around and said, Hey, you need about $2,700 rent for this house. And the guy the real estate investor went and asked the people for it says, you know, we, we don't want to create payment shock. You do want to buy this house in the future. Don't you? I know you're putting $40,000 down, but I need to ask you for $2,700 a month rent. And the person said, Oh yeah, I understand now I need to pay that. And they basically turn around and pay that amount. So there's, there's protection for you as a real estate investor to make certain that all the parameters of the setting up for the loan will be within guidelines. Yeah. So how long does this process take? So from the time the real estate investor, you know, gets the, the tenant buyer, you know, on the phone or in, in contact with you and your team, how long is it going to take to get this answer back to the real estate investor to see if they can, you know, what they can afford? Well, there are two major elements that I need in order to be able to to run the numbers. And once I get once I get these these two elements, it's it's usually within 24 hours. I need right. access to their credit report. So they need to grant me access to their credit report. And so I, for that, I need to talk with them because I we really, we really like to get their Credit Karma account because they don't have an inquiry on their credit report. Mm -hmm. so, so they have to need, they, they should talk with us for that. And then the other thing is the, the income. All I need to have is a pay stub or a W-2 and people can use their cell phone, snap a picture and, and send us their pay information. Right. When I so get let, me, let me ask you this real quick. So let's say I've got a potential buyer of one of my homes and, you know, let's say I don't want them to go fall in love with a particular home or be looking at a home that they can't afford to start with. Does, do you have a, a way with your process to report back and say, okay, Here's the maximum loan amount that these people can afford given their debts or what debts they're anticipated to have at the time they'd be ready for a mortgage and the income that they have. Yeah, ab absolutely. We have that, you know, what we call that, what, you know, what's the maximum, how, you said it, what's the maximum that, that I can afford, maximum right. affordability. So we can backwards mathematically uh, calculate out that number for you all the way down to the dime. So now let's say to you, so you or the team have gotten back to the tenant buyer, the real estate investor. Here's the, here's the maximum amount. Okay. So, so now we know they can afford it. All right. Hypothetically speaking, we've got a tenant buyer that can afford it. They got enough uh, non-refundable lease option deposit to give us. 
and now they've, they've chosen a home, we're good to go, and you have anticipated it's gonna take about nine months for them to get ready for the mortgage. They move into the home, now what's that process look like from them starting the credit uh, restoration process to getting ready for the mortgage? Well, the first thing that's gonna happen is you as a, a, the real estate investor will be notified that they've engaged in the credit repair process you'll be given some disclosure forms that I'll, I'll advise that you have them sign. One of them is, is the one I just had on the screen, which is the debt to income ratio analysis. There's actually a signature line there that says that they're not gonna materially change their income or their debt load. So as they go through the credit repair, my staff is gonna basically write some letters and, and we're gonna write letters that go to the credit bureaus, TransGene, Equifax, and Experience. So without giving away all the secret sauces to how the whole thing works, we know what to say to who to say it and how to say it at the appropriate time to have the bad things removed from the credit report and then have them build new credit. And that's where the whole thing comes in about 85 points is their average improvement score. So that behind the scenes, uh, we're doing all that. Plus there's a little bit of participation on their part if they have to build credit and no new bad stuff, you know. Yeah. Now, how can the real estate investor that has referred this client to you? And by the way, I'll just go ahead and tell everybody, you know, when someone gives me a large enough lease option deposit, then I pay Paul and his team out of that lease option deposit for the service, okay? Instead of relying on the tenant buyer to be making that monthly payment or, or what have you. I mean, a lot of times they will be maxed out on what they can afford, you know, on their, on their monthly rent that they're paying us. And so... But you see, they're giving me a non-refundable lease option deposit. So it's actually the tenant buyer that is cash flowing the payment for Paul's services, even though, you know, it is, you know, it, it is coming from us. So I just wanted to share that with everybody, Paul. So how can the real estate investor be current all the time and be made aware as to the progress that, you know, that, you know how the stores are coming up or, you know, certain uh, derogatory items have been deleted? How can the real estate investor know what's going on and not be left in the dark, you know, along the way? We give them a tracking mechanism. They can go log on to our system. They have a private portal. They're, all they're going to do is set it up and, uh, and, and then they, when they click on their portal, they'll see everybody that they've referred to us that's doing credit repair. They'll see all of their statuses. They can click on any one of the names and bring up where they're at right now when the last letters went out, what's left. What set of results have they've received all the way down to the item level, Jay? It'll show, like, for example, the judgment came off of a credit report, which is a major, major mm -hmm. thing, especially if you're trying to get it through, uh, as you know, mortgages or, you know, there are certain things that will disqualify people from a time frame. Like for two years, they're not going to get a loan after a bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. so there's, there's, there's score. And then there's underwriting guidelines. And either of them can knock them out of the, the mortgage process. So if a certain element is on the credit report and it's an element that, that affects underwriting guidelines and disqualifies them and all of a sudden now it's off the credit report, well, you know, that's a major one. I mean, that's, that's where we do our little dance and we get them over to the mortgage broker as quickly as possible. Yeah, um, one of the other things, if I may, Jay, you mentioned a little bit about you paying the fee and such. But, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that 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 puts you in a position where when you advertise, you can actually say this, this house comes with credit repair. So your phone rings a little bit more than the average real estate. Yeah. Actually, absolutely. When we are promoting and, you know, looking for rent to own buyers, which by the way, I want to tell the entire audience right now, let me tell you where I'm finding these rent to own buyers right now. I'm getting more leads from this one source and it's free. It's free folks. And that is Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace is outperforming everything, uh, you know, as of right now. I still do Facebook ads, but they don't even perform as well as the free marketplace. So anyway, in our marketing, we will advertise free credit repair. And it is free. I'm paying for it. Being cash flowed by the non-refundable lease option deposit, but I'm paying for it. And the reason that increases our response to our marketing is that the majority of the people that are going to be responding to a rent-to-own ad or, or a rent-to-own home or program, they know they need the credit repair. And so you're, you're speaking their language, and it increases our response by promoting free credit repair.
So I'm glad you brought that up, Paul. Paul, tell everybody where you where you are located and what areas of the United States that you service. Sunny, beautiful Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania here in February. <laughs> it's not quite so sunny and beautiful, but anyhow, that's where we're located, right out of um, a little suburb outside of Pittsburgh called Murraysville. Been here for quite some time, have about, have six people that work with the company, so we're small but mighty, so we can easily handle your business in all 50 states. So we've done business in all 50 states as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Paul, we are just about out of time, if you can believe it. Have you got any burning information that's really, really hot that you feel like you need to share before we wind down the show? And then we're going to give out uh, your contact information for those that would like to continue the conversation with you. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time out to, uh, to introduce me to those within uh, your universe, Jay. So um, um, we're here. We're, we're, uh, we're like, as I mentioned, we're a family run business. So we're all approachable. And whenever you start doing business with us, you, you'll get a, a personal phone call from me. You know, whenever you do your first deal, send your first deal through us. So I just want to introduce you to how the whole process works. I have a really cool script that I can provide to any, anybody listening to this. So if they want to uh, text me their uh, contact information, then uh, I will, I'll send them off the script. All I really need is their email address. It'd be helpful if I had their name as well. And I'll send them a script. And uh, and I got a couple other freebies I can send along the way too. And uh, I'll send those by email as well. All right. So how do they locate you? How do they reach out to you, Paul? Well, probably the easiest thing is just text me your name and your email address to 412-242-2733. It's 412-442-2733. And if someone wants to go go to your website first, what website would you give out? I would give out screenthetenant.com. Is very All one word, screenthetenant.com. All right. And if someone prefers to initially communicate with you by email, what email address you want to give out? Oh, uh, paul at mycreditteam.com. And the other website really to refer them to for the credit repair would be my credit team. And you'll, you'll notice on there that there's a, a section that talks about rent to own and no other credit repair company has a rent to own section. So, oh, by the way, my, myself and my wife, we're also real estate investors too. Sure. Sure. So your email is Paul, P-A-U-L at mycreditteam.com, right? Credit and team have two T's which run together. Yes, that's it. All right. That's perfect. That's perfect. Paul, thank you so much for taking your time uh, to be here on the show. Great information. And as I said at the beginning of the show, um, it's just been great to have you and uh, Joanne and your team, you know, taking care of this for nine years now for, for my uh, tenant buyers. And it's just fantastic. Appreciate you being on, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. Absolutely. And everybody, I want to see you at the upcoming uh, Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference. Get on over to www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Jay Conner, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And until we see you on the next show, here's to taking your real estate investing career to the next level. Bye for now.